Oh, all right, I'm in stereo. All right, folks, welcome to What Did You Write Today? This one's episode is a little sillier. For those who don't know, it's a uh, look into the writing process of me, Steve Whale, Mr. Jokes, what I usually do. Oh, we already have a joke up, actually. What I usually do is I take a word or a concept, I flesh it out. And uh, speaking of flesh, today we got the word butts. So I already thought of one joke. So here we go. Jokes about ass eating. I don't like tongue in cheek humor. All right, there you. What a brilliant joke! We wrote it right away. So uh, this was inspired by the book "The Serious Guide to Joke Writing" by Sally Halloway. The show was inspired by Bob Ross. Thanks to Joel Com for providing the video. Okay, so what do we think of when we think of butts? Right, we think of like. Uh, why don't we go with the specifics, right? We already wrote down specs, but what else do we think of? We think of uh, poop, right? That's funny. Let's do how it relates to comedy. And by the way, guys, please feel free to comment any ideas, suggestions. Uh, normally we don't do a topic this vulgar. But hey, I'm feeling frisky. I broke my joke writing record this month. You might see it up on the display screen shortly. Please comment with either any jokes or ideas. Usually we do a topic like dating or uh, something to that extent. Maybe a comedy club or we'll break down an idea like we'll think of a lawyer and we'll do ideas like that. But today we're going to be... Uh, we're going to be going a little blue. And as, as, uh, now usually I say my jokes don't like to go blue, they go ranch. And blue reminds me of a, a Mad Magazine joke about, uh, bowel humor where they say, if it's yellow, it's mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. If it's blue, what did you do? So right now it's 9.25, and I'll give you shout-outs. Who do we got in the house? Roberto C. Tobar, Todd Tondera, Adam Susan, Ian Fidance. Look at Phil, my cousin Phil with the LOL cake, huh? Okay, and Don Johnson in the house. Ian Fidance is a hilarious comedian. You check him out. I see him hosting Creek Cave Live a lot. He stuck around for a show I was on after called Snake Oil, which was a lot of fun. Todd Tondera, of course. Uh, sorry if I'm a little slow right now. I'm doing a little housekeeping where I have to date everything. Not like anything will date me. But um, today is the what? The 29th? How are all of you? It's so nice to be here writing with you today. I hope you had a good day. I had a fine day. I was I was with my folks. So what do we think? With comedy, right? Humor, uh, toilet humor. Maybe what we'll think about is we'll think about um, a scenario. This is the last thing I need. I think I'm back. All right, I'm back. All right, great. Thank you. Sorry about that. Hey, emphasis on the back. Am I right? It's a good riff. Right, baby got back. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, we're going to have a lot of fun today. I just saw Tommy McNamara in the house. He's a very funny guy. He's a funny guy. 
feces, uh, scat humor. Oh boy, am I too loud? I just saw Tommy in the house. All right. Oh, that piano. Uh, let's see. Right, you fart out your butt. Diarrhea. Cha cha cha. Uh, passing gas. Flatulating. Right, you have to excuse yourself. As Rodney Dangerfield joked, you know what, um, what would he say? Oh, hey. He'd say, you know what true class is? When you're alone in a room and you fart and you say, excuse me. Uh, what else? Uh, they call it the can. There are some really good guitar solos on this album. Let me know if the music's too loud or anything, if there's any audio issues. J.J. Watt's out for the season, Texas fans. Charles Chualco, Adam Susan in the house. Justin Perez, so many familiar facelifts. Thanks for showing me a like and a heart. Conversation starter. I've heard of Girl Interrupted, but Broadcast Interrupted? Tommy, I'm loving it. Tommy, plug your stuff. Where can I see you around? Come on. Give yourselves a plug. But please comment on my... Uh, let's see. Is it called toilet humor when your career's in the toilet? Uh, you flush, right? This is funny, I'm laughing. You flush. You handle. I don't really, I don't know if I have a handle. I would say I have a handle on my career, except that, yeah, it's in the toilet. Oh, man, I think we could just do a whole wall of career in the toilet jokes. Oh, man, I'm having fun. This reminds me of when I used to do Riffing Time. We once did the movie American Flatulators, which was a spoof of American Gladiators, but it was all fart jokes. There were literally hundreds of fart jokes in the movie. Is that Matt Nadesta? Christopher Catanese, thank you for the raffle. Nadesta in the house, funny guy. Works at some e-cards. Charles Chualco, CityBug7. On Instagram. Worked on the special yesterday, great guy. Um, scat humor, it's a gross out. Gross out humor. I used to do a lot of really gross humor. I was kind of like Neil Hamburger when I started out. I was kind of trying to satirize over the top comedians, but it's kind of hard to do that without being really gross yourself. Some gas, diarrhea, you gotta excuse yourself. Uh... Excuse myself for that joke. Right? Maybe you ate too much. Some of the ideas are only tangenti tangentially related to the main idea, which is butts. But we're just basically writing down... Gross out humor. Baby got back? Babe, what is it called? Back rent? Back loans?
Baby got back? Baby got back? You can blame it all on me. Uh, booty? Right, it's just too fine. Won't quit. Very funny friend of mine, Christy Cello, had a funny joke where she was at a job interview and they, they said, oh, you quit being a babysitter, you quit at your job. Is there anything you haven't quit? And she goes, I have a booty! I'm <laughs> just doing an approximation of her voice. She's got a silly voice. But she says, I have a booty that just won't quit. And they go, thank you. We'll keep in touch. Um, inappropriate... I know there's an inappropriate comedy, the hilarious movie with Vince Offer. Comedy going blue. Jokes about private parts. Uh, what else has to do with butts, right? You got maybe you got a rash. If you, especially if you're a Battletoads fan. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. What are some other things? Uh, hemorrhoids. Right, that ass. Here comes that ass. Smooth as a baby's. I think we might want to stay away from that one. This is such a great song. Ten people have reacted to this video. Tommy, I gave you a shout out, you dingus. Tommy, you should have been paying attention, Tommy Mac. Is this some more Chicago beef? Oh, my goodness. I, Tommy has a friend, uh, Tom Brady, not from the Patriots, but he's just as surly. And after a show, uh, we were talking, and I said, uh, Andy Kindler is my favorite living comedian, and he said, I can tell. Oh, Chicago beef. He's a good guy, though, both of them. Tommy, get your own plugs. I said you were hilarious. <laughs> Why don't you get some hair plugs, Tommy? I'm sorry! That wasn't nice! Oh, man. Tommy's a good guy. That, that makes me want to do a joke about hair plugs. Yeah, there's some swearing in there, Todd. Tommy, I love you. I'm glad I didn't make you mad. All right, let's see. This music is energizing me. Uh, it's got, you know, fat. I'm fat! Gross. Come on, this is satire. Emphasis on the tire. Satire. Sick and tired sat. Poop jokes. This is gross out comedy. I don't do gross out comedy. I do audience out comedy. Yeah, we're writing it down. This is a great song.
They do a live version of this that is one of the best guitar solos I've ever heard. I think this song is like pure video games. Tom Brady joined. Todd Tondera says he likes swearing. He loves swearing. Whatever, you piece of shit. Of course you do. Uh, let's see. In American Flatulators, they do a joke where, um... They, they're... They have this Motown band that's doing all farting songs. And instead of I'm a soul man, it's I'm asshole. <laughs> man. Ah! I'm asshole man. <laughs> Gross out humor. I do audience out humor. <sighs> Rash. Crack? Come on, everybody's got a crack in their butt. Crack up. Crack me up with this jokes about butts. I'm the only... Wait. Jokes about butts? I've heard of a crack... Smoke crack every day. This is getting very blue. Don't do crack, folks. Listen to me and Pee Wee Herman. Jokes about butts, they, they crack you up. <laughs> I don't do jokes about butts, but I can crack an audience. <laughs> you yeah, were writing it down. Jokes about butt cheeks crack me up in the middle. <laughs> yeah, we're writing it down. Crack my butt up. That's Prodigy for, uh... The band Prodigy if they were babies. Crack my butt up. Jono Zelay, hilarious comedian, saw him at the creek, not to name drop, I saw him at the creek in the cave a week and a day ago. Leave your own plugs, comment. Oh, what about toilet paper? Toilet paper? That joke was written on toilet paper. I think people are watching this video because of that kick and bass line. Dat bass. Here comes dat bass. Cheeks. Uh, let's see. Hemorrhoids. What else have we got? Smells. Uh, we, do, we did the word gross a hundred times. Come on, that joke was satire. Now is it funny? Oh, you guys, do you guys not like satire? You guys just don't like satire jokes because they're not funny. The joke bombs. Come on, that was satire. Emphasis on the tire. Come on, so you guys don't like satire? That was satire. I put the tire in satire. We'll write that down, that's good enough. Plus, it's a one-liner. 
Oh man, I had a big meal today. That's why I'm I'm only having uh, crackers and cheese for lunch, or for dinner, I should say. I had a big lunch. I had a uh, pastrami sandwich at Mike's place in Staten Island. Shout out to Mike's place. Sally Burtnick, steroids hemorrhoid connection. Although I like roid. More like satin tired. These jokes are exhausting. Todd Tondera, you're killing it. Sally Burtnick, we all know Sally. She does the Macaulay Culkin show every month. I saw her yesterday on the special. Check out the Macaulay Culkin show every month. Also with my bud, Brett Davis. Roid Rage. I need to excuse myself. Another great guitar solo coming up. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, you, right, you might smack it. Or spank it. Uh, crack and cheese, am I right? Some girl wanted me to spank her butt. <laughs> I told her, hey. I've done some weird shows. I did a show at a sex dungeon. Sorry, I just have to turn off. Uh... Okay, sorry about that, folks. I do want to. I want to do more jokes about like how much, how long we've been going. Do 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 bing bing. I'm sorry to be final takeoff. Okay, we'll start marking some things that we. That we like, because we're about 25 minutes in or so, 30 minutes. Uh, I want to do something about gross-out humor. Oh, boy. And I kind of like the metaphor of the toilet. I kind of like excusing yourself. Or maybe just embarrassing yourself in front of somebody. I don't know if that's how you spell it. Cheese and crackers. Nick, I had a big lunch. Nick, I had a big lunch. I'm sorry. I had Gouda. You know, I think cheese is pretty Gouda. Here we go. Matt Nadesta killing it. I try not to do bathroom humor, although that is the only room where I could do 45 minutes. Yeah, bathroom humor. My career has stalled, folks, okay? Urinal. Let me just write down stall real quick so I don't forget it. Urinal. I barely know her. Oh my god, this song. Toilet humor. Yeah, my career has stalled. I saw Nadine Hill in the house. I hope your your phone is okay. I saw it at the repair shop. I saw you at the repair shop. John Morve in the house. Jonathan, I saw you. Were you shooting a commercial for DirecTV? <laughs> or are you just Jewish? Am I right, folks? 
Oh, that's a very 90s punchline. Because I'm a Jew, folks, okay? Paul Reiser here. You know, I say I'm Jewish on my mother's side. When you're Jewish, you have to be on your mother's side. Am I right, folks? Oh, man. Yeah, Todd Tondera with the toilet handle. I got it. I would say I have a handle on my career because it's in the toilet. My career has stalled. What if you could meet someone in the urinal, right? Because they had that thing where the guy tapped his foot, the senator or whatever. My agent says that he thinks I should do gross-out humor. I'm sort of thinking of something, like, I don't know if you've seen the Mel Brooks film Silent Movie, but they're trying to pitch this executive on doing a slapstick film. And he says, slapstick? Nobody likes that. And, like, his chair, like, flies across the room. So maybe I'm thinking of something like that, where it's like, then he puked and farted. You know what? I think I'm going to write that down. My agent says I should be more of a gross-out comic. I said, there's no way I'm going to do that. Now, if you excuse me, I have to poop and fart. Now, if you excuse me, I have to go puke and fart. The Aristocrats. I actually did a joke on snake oil. My gut is telling me on Friday or on Saturday, I did a joke, um, nevertheless, which is a great joke. It's an aristocrat-style joke where, uh, somebody gets up, they, okay, it's a little complex. I, I think I'll tell it at the end of the day. But the gist of it is, uh, there's a boxing event. The announcer says, ladies and gentlemen, singing our national anthem, Amy West. And a heckler gets up and he shouts all these ridiculous things like, oh, she's the worst. I hate her. She smells so bad. She's the biggest piece of shit I've ever seen in my life. And then the announcer says, nevertheless, she will be performing. <laughs> so, uh... There was this midnight show and nobody was there, so I just did Nevertheless and it got a big laugh. But uh, I did impressions, I did Hollywood stories. It was a fun show to kind of do it at midnight and make everybody laugh. I like this joke a lot. It's pretty blue. My agent says I should be a gross-out comedian. I said, no way. Now if you'll, if you'll, now if you'll excuse me, I have to go poop and fart. This might be a three-liner. Which would not be good. I don't know if the joke is that good. I'm going to cram it in here. Cram, I said cram. They give you an exam. This is a good way to clear out all the, uh, you know, all the immaturity that's chilling around here. Maybe I should have had the word be fart. Fart! Passing gas. You guys gotta see Vic Berger's videos. Matt, isn't that a great puke and fart? Yeah. Yeah, I think puke and fart is funny too. Uh oh! If you excuse me, I have to go puke and fart. Yeah, because it flows a lot better, right? If you excuse me, I have to go puke and fart. Oh, these great guitar solos. This is what we call a call and response. 
And speaking of call and response, I just thought of a new joke. My girlfriend and I have a call and response relationship. I call, she doesn't respond. Okay, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, I love that little bass line they do. Uh, maybe I should... Uh, I was going to bring out the chair. I do deserve the chair. But I guess I can I can reach that low. Speaking of do, they have doo-doo. What are you going to do with the doo-doo? You have to watch Vic Berger's videos. It's so funny. We're dumping 22 gallons into the rice. Now I have 44 gallons of rice. Boy, you, you can't see this joke coming a mile away. I really have to erase this first joke. Some my folks have been coming over a lot lately, and I think I'm going to watch this right after I'm done. Welcome to the Fantasy Zone. Get ready. By the way, if you're looking for good video game arcades in the city, 2-Bits Retro Arcade, I think, is the best by far. It's like Barcade with an attitude. No, it's like Barcade, but they don't have all the uh, frat boys and the posers. It's really nice. It's got pinball there, too, and it's got some really nice machines. It's got a lot of 90s machines, which I like. I'm working on NBA Jam. They have one that saves your initials. Robert Hayward in the house. What about something like I had a bad experience with this bakery near me? I went in and asked for two loaves, and he should. Sh he said, sure, let me pinch them out. Oh, my God, Charles. Tim Platt in the house. Tim Platt is a very good friend, and he's part of a show, Cartoon Monsoon, every month at The Annoyance. Check that out. Charles Chiwalko. My agent is stuffy. He told me I need prep prep, and he took lax... I had to get him Pepto Bismol prep. Oh, pep prep, and he. Wait, what? Charles, I need a Gatorade after reading this joke. Is this a joke or an SAT test? Charles Chuanko says, My agent is stuffy. He told me I need pep prep and B look lax. I had to get him Pepto Bismol preparation H and X lax. <laughs> Charles, shame on you. <laughs> Charles, oh man, Charles is so funny. Charles Chiwako, if you have the time, I think you should take up stand-up comedy. I think you'd be very good at it. He pitches jokes frequently at the special, and a lot of them are quite good. Smooth as a baby's behind. Oh, behind. Baby got back round checks. <laughs> Pepto dismal. I don't do inappropriate humor. Toilet paper? 
<laughs> not in my house. Baby teeth? No way. Not in my mouth. <laughs> That's a joke for my friend Ryan Bennett. A very good friend. Uh, what are some other things that happen with your butt? You sit on it? Hey, sit on it. Right, it's near your crotch. <laughs> One time there was, uh, it was, this is a little problematic. It was a lady, but it was at a bar past midnight. And I was doing comedy and I did a joke and she went, that was a stretch. I said, yes, yeah, stretch this. And I did a little and everybody went nuts. It was one of those shows where everybody was making fun of everybody and people were getting up and yelling. It was so much fun. Oh, man, it's good to do shows like that sometimes to do. Well, that was an open mic. Just after midnight, everybody's cursing and yelling and giving each other the finger. Passing gas, diarrhea... Right, everybody has one. Are we hitting a wall here? Oh, I hope this isn't on shuffle. No, I don't think so. Boy, we, we did a lot of jokes today. I don't do inappropriate humor, you buttless ass shit. Tim Platt. Chris Calagero, Alan Yasbin in the house. Chris Cal, another very good friend of mine. He does a show um, about once every two months or so, maybe a little less, called Not Quite Midnight that I'm on. He's also on a show called Match Game. Check him out. And Alan Yasbin in the house. Very funny guy. I've been seeing him a lot. Lately, and I like what I see. Um, it's hot, right? We're not going to lie, folks. We like it. Hubba hubba. Right? Hubba hubba. As Neil Hamburger would say, right, man? Hubba hubba. Poop jokes. Poop dreams. Was it Norm MacDonald? There was Norm McDonald's sports show. They did a thing where they were like, please send in fake movie titles. And after one day, they said, stop sending in poop dreams. <laughs> fake sports movie titles. Stop sending in poop dreams. I ate too much. My act gives you gas. Pepto. Andy Kindler had this joke where it'd say, Larry the Cable Guy says you should take Prilosec before seeing his act. <laughs> oh, man. Bless me, Lord, I can eat like a fucking idiot. This might have been a good episode to call Bodily Functions, but hey, butts bring in the clicks. Tim Platt, I'm not passing gas. I'm passing Gus, the dang valedictorian. I'm a teacher and I'm also farting. Tim Platt, very surrealist. That's uh, some click hole stuff. Click hole. <laughs> you know, nobody ever asks questions. I always say, sometimes somebody would have a question, like if it's a not stand up, they say, how do I get into stand up? Stuff like that. We probably get some joke out of flush. Heckler told me I smelled bad. 
or something. A heckler said blank. Nevertheless, I always wanted to incorporate nevertheless into my act. Todd Tondera, have you ever done a mic where it smelled like shit? Wait, you mean today? Oh, boy. Nick Palumbo. Ooh, this, this one's got a little marimba. Maramba? Carmen Miranda. Nick Palumbo says the difference between one-ply and two-ply toilet paper. Just ask my toilet. Yeah, you gotta learn to, to ply yourself. Oh, my goodness. Toilet paper, you gotta learn to ply yourself. I'm like toilet paper. I gotta learn to to ply myself. We're writing it down. Ouch. We shaking the board? I've heard of shaking the pen, but shaking the board? Woo! Mario and Sonic at Rio! Uh, what do we got? I'm like toilet paper. I need to two-ply myself. This does not make any sense. We'll put a little carrot in there. I'm like lazy toilet paper. I don't two-ply myself. It's almost like I'm drinking alcohol throughout the show and the jokes become... Maybe that... I don't drink, but that would be a funny episode if I did. I'm on medication. And even if I wasn't, I'm not a big drinker. I'm probably the biggest drinker you've ever seen. <laughs> this is the fun song. There we go. Crit Charles Chihuahua says, when I pack a bowl and smoke it, it's my bowel movement. Or a bowl movement? Adam Susan, I'm not bombing. The audience's laughs are constipated. So, uh, oh, thanks for the like, whoever threw that in there. You know what, I think I'm going to like my own video. Uh, let's see what else we got. Matt Nadesta, gas is the only part of me that'll ever get passed. Passed, I would love to do jokes about passing in a comedy club, but unfortunately they don't work. I've had jokes where I've said, like, the only comedy club I've, I've ever passed at was called the Kidney Stone. Oh my goodness. I always try to make sure I have a part of my body in the frame. Nick Palumbo with a Mr. Jokes classic. Two-ply toilet paper is just one-ply toilet paper with an attitude. Nick, you've done it again. Charles Chihuahua with some political satire. Did you hear about the Chinese descendant who got jailed for squeezing toilet paper? The brand was Charmin Mao. Like Chairman Mao. I just got it as... Charmin Mao was leaving my mouth. My mouth. Alright, let's get up, huh? We're not done yet. Chant me on. Give me the strength. Jonathan Katz does this funny thing where he... If he's telling a joke that... Uh, that he really likes, but it's kind of a cheesy one, he'll say, Lord, give me the strength. Okay, let's go. Toilet. Private parts. I don't do jokes about private parts. You want to talk about being the butt of a joke. Was that joke too asinine? 
and I give that ass a nine. That's not nice. That means there's something lacking. I have no idea to spell asinine. Jokes about butts? That's just asinine. Let me look up how to spell asinine. There we go. Adam Susan, I don't steal jokes, I just use other comics as fertilizer. I hope you like the music today. I mean, I know I'm rocking out. I was actually pretty close. You know what I was watching that really made me laugh was uh, I was watching Robin Hood Men in Tights and the part where he sings the love song to Maid Marian. You know, the night is young and you're so beautiful. And the part where the part where he's singing where he dips her down and he's singing like into her face and the wind comes back. That part made me laugh so hard what a great movie <laughs> you can really tell even Mel Brooks's worst stuff man is, is really funny Todd Tondera says I like having pink eyes so much people have started to call me poop eye well blow me down olive oil Todd I'm gonna rescind my like on that one Charles Chihuahua, a club accused me of taking a dump. I said I wasn't in the bathroom. They said the one on stage. Dan, uh, Dan Ball in the house. There you go. My phone's a little smudged. Oh, boy. Todd, I don't know if you can get the audience on your side by saying I love having pink eyes so much. I did a show recently where the guy was talking about... Um, how, like, do you like this food? And the audience was like, yeah. He's like, well, it's awful. And he was explaining it. And it was just, I was up after him. I felt bad. People like food. Much like Popeye would say, everything is food. Jokes about butts? How asinine. Let's see. I do hiding in the toilet after a show humor. I hide in the toilet. Toilet humor? I don't know if you'd say I do toilet humor, but that's where I hide after the show. I used to do a joke, but it's a little raunchy where I would say Staten Island comedy clubs are so racist they have separate but equal toilet humor which is true I've heard some really bad jokes there what did you wipe today Mexican food or la I don't know guys hi Dan how are you it's nice to hear from you Although wipe is a funny one. I gotta wipe that joke. Oh, I don't know if I want to do too many of these poop jokes on stage. <laughs> is it... I do most of my hiding in the toilet humor. We're not going to write that down. Passing gas? Right, what is it, crop dusting? <laughs> <laughs> Did 
Charles Chihuahua, toilet humor, more like kombucha humor. We got Craig Hecht in the house. Craig Hecht, the light shines. All right, let's do, let's get some jokes about butts. I don't know if I do inappropriate humor. Cheeks. Don't be cheeky with me. I have to go puke and fart. This is the best joke out of all of them. Uh, let's see. Vote for this one at the end of the day. I'm doing this for 53 minutes. Okay, we got about 20 minutes left. I wouldn't say I'm the butt of a joke. You know, people tell me I'm an ass man. Yeah, they say you're an ass man. I'm an ass man. I'm an ass man. Am I a butt man or a boob man? They say you're a boob man. They tell me you're an ass man. That joke is public domain and you know it. Oh boy, you like this, huh? Talk about a clothing line. Huh? Am I right, folks? Jokes about butts, how asinine. Alright, fetish. Boob. You check out. Colin Burgess, who I saw yesterday, a very funny friend. He had this joke where he'd say... I was checking out this ass, but I didn't like it. There was poop coming out of it. People tinder on the toilet. Does that mean they wipe right? Oh, Charles. Don't hold the poop jokes in. There you go. What did you wipe today? I know someone said that. All right, come on. Let's write a joke. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> what are you guys full? Oh, God. Gaping hole. Alan Yasbin. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to embarrass you by doing toilet humor. Plus I'm hiding there after the show. <coughs> I do audience out humor. Uh, maybe there's more here to it than to gross out comedian. My agent says I should be a gross out comedian. Harlan Williams has the joke where he says, if a woman wears a thong and she takes a crap, does that cut it right in two? <laughs> and the audience goes like, ooh, he goes, all right, was that one a little rude? Was that joke too gross or too satirical? Satirical. Could use a Zeralto, folks. Boy, Zeralto got some bad press when Arnold Palmer died, huh? More like Robert Palmer. Because <laughs> now they're both dead. Sorry, we're hitting the wall, which is a bummer. We have a lot of viewers. I have to excuse myself from the audience. Heartburn, garbage, come on, let's think about this. Why don't we mark off some ideas that have potential? 
I like Boob Man, Ass Man. I like... Uh... Hubba Hubba. I kind of like... I don't know if I like excusing yourself. Okay. Maybe this is a good one. My audiences are so polite, they say, may I be excused? I'm going to write that down. That needs a little reworking. Hmm, that line needs a little reworking. I would do a joke that I really like. That It's, it's more of a Facebook joke. You know what this this has potential. Which one is this? This isn't magical sound shower, is it? I don't think so. No, it's splash wave. Okay. You know, they say writing is like a tide. You gotta keep it up. That's what my girlfriend said. My audiences leave skid marks. Oh my goodness. People say... Well, that's the thing. Todd Tondera, that, that's like a public domain joke. Uh, the, he says he really likes the joke. People say I'm an ass man. They say, Steve, you're an ass man. That's something I could do, but... It's something that I saw the Rodney Dangerfield, Murray Langston. Uh, oh, man, there we go. Charles Chiwalko. I was in a club's bathroom. I noticed my name on the wall. Oh, wait, that's where I wrote my act. I like the name on the wall idea. That's very funny. Someone asked if I'm a boob man or an ass man. Which one is DC and which one is Marvel? Alan, loving it. Did you delete that comment? That's okay. It's immortalized now in this conversation. I like the name on the wall of a bathroom. This is, oh, my favorite song on the album. Because I did a joke... I got my face on the wall of a comedy club. My check bounced. I got my face on the wall of a comedy club. The bathroom wall. The bathroom wall. So remember, folks, we're going to be voting on which joke is our favorite at the end of the night. And I'll be Instagramming it. <sighs> that audiences are so polite joke is, is funny. Let's see. I mean, number eight puts them all to shame. This reminds me of an open mic I used to run. We would play a lot of video game music. And this is the best part in the middle of it. <laughs> the 
<laughs> the car's revving up. Okay, the guy in the bathroom with the candy and cologne. Uh, I'll just put assistant. Right, there's an episode of The Life and Times of Tim where Bob Odenkirk plays a very funny one. Where <laughs> he gets into a fight with him about how difficult the job is. And he goes, look at me turn it on, it's just right. He goes, I can do that. And he turns out, he goes, oh, look, the splashing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Splashing is funny. I've said it, uh, it's not a nice thing to say, but I've said this audience, this audience is the faucet because it's hot and cold. But, um, stall, aim, wall, floor. You gotta watch where you aim. I really need to upload these to YouTube. I'm like five episodes behind. But that's fine. Who cares? Um, maybe something to do with gross videos. Alan Yasmin correctly points out it's an attendant. Okay, how about this? I did a show at a fancy club yesterday. There was a bathroom attendant, and he helped me hide. We'll write it down. We'll write it down. I think already having a joke up there, I think, really helps a lot. Maybe just because I hadn't written in a couple days and I had a lot of jokes in me and, like, butts was kind of a fun one. Maybe I should do a fun one every month. It just makes no sense. Last time I did toilet humor, my audience overflowed to the exit. I like overflow. I did a corporate gig for Tidy Bowl. Bad flow? I don't know. Charles Chihuahua, I practiced a few jokes with the bathroom attendant. Turns out that was the gig. Charles, love it. That's silly. I performed at a club that was really fancy. Yeah, that this joke might be a little tough because... It's tough to do jokes about how bad I'm doing because I'm always killing.
Now guess what just happened? We gotta move to this wall. Because I feel like we still got a joke left in us. Oh, also, for some of my Staten Island friends... Whoops. Okay. Full board tonight, no whammies. Yeah, they're, they're all passable. Thank you, Vin. Yeah, there's a Staten Island, um, Staten Island Advance is doing a thing, Best Artist in Staten Island. Vote for Vin Forte's podcast, Anytime with Vin Forte. There's a couple of others. There's some very funny comedian friends on there, Tim Duffy, Casey Jost, Jay Miller. I voted for those guys. I really do not know culture on Staten Island. I, I thought it was, um... I, I was kind of like, whoa, so much is happening without me knowing. Do not vote for me. I don't consider myself a Staten Island comic. I really don't. We have... Okay, we're going to end it after this joke, okay? What do you say? We've got two songs left, but I think we can write a joke by the time this song ends. Stall. What was one we were looking for that I thought was funny? Flow. Oh, we did write flow. We wrote it twice. I guess I kind of like the idea of the attendant. That's an interesting job. I went up to a bathroom attendant. He said this. I said... Or... I said this, he said this. Yeah, this is Magical Sound Shower from uh, Fantasy Star. This is a great song. Maybe some situation on a date. Rudy will await your foundation. Yes, that's true. Ben Forte, you've been covered in Time Magazine? Good for you. Okay. I'm writing down condoms. telling you, I was on a date at a fancy restaurant. I went to the attendant. I said, how much are condoms? He said, don't worry about it. I said, oh, great, that's free. He said, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> that's a long joke, and it's a last joke.
I'm really proud of the amount of jokes we wrote tonight about a stupid topic. This joke won't work. But that's fine, we wrote it down. Oh, I forgot to do a ratio. Well, you know what, I still haven't compiled it. At the end of the month, I like to do a ratio of A material to B material, stuff like that. I, I don't really know. Sometimes the problem with writing, if you don't get out there enough, for me, I think, you just, you kind of don't know what works, because you have so much stuff that needs to be tested. Like, even on a Monday, I'll try to do six or seven open mics, and it's tough. This joke could probably be shortened. I could probably even start it with, I asked the bathroom attendant how much are condoms. Get ready, folks. You're going to be voting on our favorite joke, and I'm going to Instagram it. Yeah, Magical Sound Shower, I think, is from OutRun. It's not from Fantasy Star. Excuse me. Alright, get your um, America's Funniest Home Videos uh, buzzers out. <clears throat> they tell me you're an ass, man. Alright, get ready. Okay, here we go. Now what happens is that we are going to vote on them. Please put the number below of your favorite joke. Number one. Jokes about ass eating? I don't like tongue-in-cheek humor. Two. Is it called... Uh, uh, is it called toilet humor when your career is in the toilet? Number three. I would say I have a handle on my career. Yeah, because it's in the toilet. Number four. I don't do gross-out humor. I do audience-out humor. Number five. Jokes about butts crack me up. Don't vote for that one. Number six. I put the tire in satire. Don't vote for that one. Number seven. Toilet humor? Yeah, my career has stalled. Number eight. This is probably the best one. My agent says I should be a gross-out comedian. I said, no way. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go puke and fart. And then we could also use the option poop and fart. Well, uh, a little joke from Jackie Mardley in a minute. Number nine. My girlfriend and I had a call-and-response relationship. I call, she doesn't respond. Number ten. I'm like lazy toilet paper. I don't two-ply myself. Number 11, jokes about butts, how asinine. Number 12, my audiences are so polite, they say, may I be excused. Which is not bad. Number 13, I performed at a club that was really fancy. There was a bathroom attendant, and he helped me hide. Number 14, I went on a date to a fancy restaurant. I asked the bathroom attendant, how much are condoms? He said, don't worry about it. I said, really? Thanks. He said, no, don't worry about it. Oh, boy. He implied that I wasn't going to have sex. So please, 
Go to Steve Whalen, MrJokes.com, S T E V E W H A L E N M R J O K E S dot com. Go to my Twitter at Real Mr. Jokes, R E A L M R J O K E S. Go to Steve Whalen, Mr. Jokes on Instagram, S T E V E W H A L E N M R J O K E S. See me on YouTube, Stephen Whalen, Joke of the Week returns every Friday on Instagram and uh, on YouTube. And let's see what else we got. Oh, yeah, if you go to, uh, I do this every Thursday and Sunday at 11 p.m. And, by the way, coming soon, meaning uh, tomorrow, you can get some I Love This Crowd stickers. Oh, oh, look at these. They're only a dollar in person and two dollars over the mail. So this is my new merch. I Love This Crowd stickers. You're going to see this in every uh, bar and comedy club coming out, let me tell you. But don't vandalize, okay? Treat these with respect, all right? And treat yourself and your community with respect. So thanks so much, folks. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i take a picture of some cheese and crackers later. I really appreciate it. Have a great night. I love this crowd. Sticker.